Good morning, everybody. It's Ben Jones here in the coffee workshop. It's another Friday morning. Thank you for joining us live for all of you coming in live. Um, for everyone joining us on the restreams and the archive broadcasts, you are welcome to. We're gonna, we got something kind of special today. Every Fridays, I like to do something special if we can. So uh, today we have, we're gonna do some pour over coffee. I've talked a lot about uh, my very first coffee brewer that I ever bought um, for, for pour over was this plastic cone, which I still use and love. Um, we've talked about the Bee House Dripper. We've talked about the V60. Um, we've done Chemex, lots of things. And those are all fantastic brewers. But what I have today is something very special. Um, you noticed I'm wearing a different hat today. This hat um, is from one of our wholesale customers called Tail Dragger Coffee. They're in Tumwater, just south of Olympia. Um, they, uh, they, they're doing a great job with our coffee, serving that local area down there. Um, I was visiting Nate at Tail Dragger, and he, uh, well, let me just show you. He had gone on a little motorcycle ride out to the uh, the Washington coast, and he came across, um, went to visit one of our accounts out there called Elixir Coffee and Tea. Uh, that's in South Bend, right on the Willapa River. It's a beautiful little spot. I highly recommend going there. And when he was there, he saw this pottery made by a local potter to the area around South Bend. Um, so this is a pour-over brewer from Shoalwater Pottery uh, in Raymond, Washington. Um, I really love all my little pour over tools. I oh, love, I, I really enjoy all my pour over tools, but I really like handmade things. Um, I'm a sucker for well crafted items. Um, I, I just like that kind of stuff. So, Nate gave me this, uh, br this pour over brewer, and he also sent along this, uh, this little decanter catch I don't know all the proper terms for what we would call this but I like this pottery it's really nice um, something I like I like my diner mug because it's nice and thick and chunky this is just well made thick ceramic uh, you can feel the quality um, I like to know that there are two people um, who are shoal water who who made this. Um, I appreciate that connection, especially coming into the coffee world, knowing like that, that this coffee, this Las Brisas from Colombia, um, this coffee was harvested by hand. Um, you know, a lot of, a lot of work and effort went into it. Anyway, I'm a, I'm a sucker for that kind of stuff. So I want to use our Shoalwater pottery brewer today. Um, now normally I would toss all my brew stuff onto the scale, but we want to be careful. This beautiful pottery is thick and solid, but it's heavy. These two items come in just over a kilogram. My scale has a 2000 gram, two kilogram limit. I don't want to damage my load cell just to make a cup of coffee. So I'll use my scale to measure everything out, but I'm gonna brew on the countertop. All right, so if we look at this brewer, the geometry of it, it's a flat bottom brewer and it's circular. It looks very much similar to a Kalita wave. Um, for those of you who have Kalita waves, you might be saying this is a, this is not a Kalita. I guarantee you, this is a this is a little Kalita wave. Um, some friends um, powder coated it for me, um, or it was a, it was a it was actually it was a prize at a at a contest. Um, so it's a one of a kind powder coated. Um, that back to kind of kind of like handmade, right? Anyway, so similar geometry, flat bottom, circular, uh, uniform circle on it. Um, the Kalita Wave uses these 185 filters. So if you have a Kalita and you have 
a good stock of 185s. Those will fit right down in there. It rides a little low, but it's a nice fit. You can use those. I like just the good old fashioned flat bottom Melita paper filters you can pick up at the grocery store. Um, the Kalita filters are great, but they're a little more spendy, so I save them for when I'm brewing in the specific brewer. These are a perfect fit in our shoal water, just like that. Uh, it rides a little high to start, but if you just push it in a little bit. Um, and what's one of the uh, most important pieces of all of our brewing is to preheat and rinse things, right? So. When I do that, the preheat and rinse action is going to just seat that filter right down where I want it to be. I've been enjoying this brewer. Of course, you know, this works perfectly every time I make one. Um, and there's a some kind of funny rule that when you're doing it on a live video that it's not going to work just right. Anyway, so we've preheated and rinsed um, the filter. I'm just going to take my rinse water and pour that out because I don't want to be drinking that. All right, then my ground coffee. Measured out 19 grams because that's what I like to make for my diner mug. This is just drip coarse. A um, little bit finer than what I had been doing for Chemex. Um, not quite as fine as a V60 or even a Bee House. This particular brewer, the flat bottom has one drain hole in it, um, which is really nice because that provides a lot of restriction to the flow. That allows me to use a more coarse grind because the brewer itself is going to restrict the flow and it's going to cause the coffee and water to dwell together and brew. All right. Now, since I'm not going to be brewing on my scale, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure my water into a separate device. And I just happen to have my other pour kettle. Um, I'm just going to put that on my scale, clear it out, and I'm going to add all the water that I would use, I'm gonna go ahead and put it, transfer it into my into my kettle. So I'm looking for just over 300 grams of water, and that will give me what I need to pour through here. If you didn't have a second uh, kettle, or um, if you're not using a scale. Top off your mug with the hot water you're going to use, and then add a little bit more for the water that's going to be absorbed. Or you can get your measured, your uh, graded, graduated beaker and be like, all right, cool, we're going to go 10 ounces plus another ounce for absorption. All right. So here is our shoal water little brewer, and it's a pour over, so we're just gonna do all the pour over things that we do. We're just gonna start splashing a portion of our water, let that bloom, let that degas. While that's doing that, I should mention, if you are looking for handmade brewing pottery um, mugs, you can find um, you can find mugs at Tail Dragger Coffee in Tumwater. You can find mugs at Elixir Coffee and Tea in South Bend. It is a beautiful drive out to and around South Bend if you're needing to get out of the house. Um, the mugs that they make are super rad. They're again just real chunky handmade, handmade mugs. You can you can see that there's a lot of care and love goes into each one. I believe all the mugs at Elixir and at Tail Dragger are branded. They do these really cool, like, clay or 
yeah, clay stamps. Um, and then they, they attach that to the mug, so that's pretty cool looking. You can show your love for your local local coffee shops, local potters. Um, if you're not in the Tumwater or South Bend area, or if you're not heading out that way anytime soon, we have the magic of the internet. And uh, Shoalwater has a really nice uh, Etsy shop, uh, E-T-S-Y. I don't know if you are familiar with Etsy, but they, their shop is, uh, they're there doing what they do. And I believe they'll also do custom orders. So I'm going to make sure we get a link popped into the comments for the Etsy shop for Shoalwater. Uh, they also have a Facebook page. Um, working on a website coming soon, so trying to go you know, a little more, a little more uh, you know, independent on those types of things. It smells really good. Again, this is the Las Brisas Colombian coffee. been a big fan of using this it's just really fun to to make something by hand and something that somebody else made by hand um so we can go and add the rest of our water in there give that a little bit of a rise let's get that all in there i measured it so i want to use it all there we are awesome this is dripping through so again um check the comments Shoalwater Pottery out of Raymond, Washington. They have an Etsy shop. They have a Facebook page. If you need to get a hold of them, um, if you'd like to order some mugs, some different potteries, they do bowls, plates, all kinds of things. Best bet is to go through the Etsy, Etsy site. It smells so good. Uh, they monitor that one much more closely, so check out Shoalwater Pottery on Etsy. Um, link in the bio. I'm also going to toss in a link to Two of my, I don't like to use the word favorite, but two coffee shops that I know do a great job with our coffee. Um, the South Bend um, Elixir Coffee, it's right on the river, on the Willapa, as it begins to meet with the ocean. I get that confluence, it's, it's pretty incredible. It's absolutely beautiful space. Um, take a little drive, go visit them, say hey. Um, I, you'll be, you'll be happy. It's a good, it's a good thing. They do, uh, sandwiches and lunch. So it's a little, little lunch stop. Get some lunch, get some coffee. Um, you can take it to go. There's a um, few different parks all up and down that highway. Mm -hmm. So we have our coffee here. Getting excited to, uh, to sip on this. So let me just pull that off. And I'm gonna have to go, I think, I got a trip out to South Bend coming up. So I might have to just get myself one of those nice Shoalwater Pottery Elixir branded little coffee mugs. Um, I still love my Chunky Diner mugs. I think it'll be full circle to come around and get get one of the other ones. It's a good cup of coffee. It's a good brewer. It has all the, the things we need. Holds our filter, allows water to pass through so we can separate the grounds from the uh, from the beverage. The proof is always in the mug. And yeah, Eric, good morning. Eric's mentioning that there's um, the, the heat retention of pottery. Yeah, real thick, heavy ceramics. It takes a little bit of energy to get these hot. Once you get them hot, they'll hold the heat and it'll help to insulate and keep your brew temperatures real stable. Um, that's why I like that rinse and preheat. If you don't rinse and preheat, you do run the risk of having all that heat energy sucked into your mug or into the into the brew cone. So definitely preheat your ceramics. Um, yeah, do that. So this is great. I really like this. Um, I like the two they have their little their little maker's mark, which is great. So Shoalwater Pottery. 
out of Raymond, Washington. Um, they are friends of friends of ours. I haven't met them personally yet, but I'm looking forward to someday um, getting to hang out with them. Maybe I'll make them a cup of coffee. Um, they're friends of friends of ours. I like their work. I didn't show you my favorite thing. My favorite thing about this, we have the glaze. It's just a really beautiful, uniform, speckled glaze. Um, it's a lot better than the glaze that I did when I was in middle school pottery class. But I love this raw edge. You can, I don't know if you can hear it. You might hear the rooster in the background. If I run my finger, I just like, I like that, that raw edge on there. I imagine uh, a little more refined on this one. Anyway, Shoalwater Pottery, Friends of Tail Dragger, Friends of Elixir on the Willapa, Friends of Batter from Bronson. It's nice to make new friends in these days. It's a good cup of coffee. Share some coffee with some friends, either uh, six feet away outside or uh, virtually over the uh, technologies. And yeah, what do y'all make? Do you guys make things by hand? Um, making music on instruments that counts as making things by hand. So yeah, toss in a uh, some pictures or links or comments on what you like to make by hand. Thanks for joining me today. Have a great weekend.